In today's post, I'll be showing you guys another creative terrorist retouching tutorial. So hi guys, welcome back to a new Photoshop tutorial. My name is still Manny and you can still find me on Twitter at Manny Photo. Today it's the third week, yes you are right, and I'm still wearing the same shirt in the same studio. I'm on holidays in the desert and I'm pre-producing some video tutorials for you guys. So in today's tutorial, I'm also gonna show you guys a terrorist, creative terrorist retouching, whatever you wanna call it, or gangster retouching. Um, yeah, and it's gonna be a bit of creative things again. Let's get started with it. Okay, so we're gonna start out again with Adobe Bridge. And first of all, we're gonna take from our contents area here, our normal raw shot directly into Camera Raw. Okay, so in Camera Raw, what we're going to do first of all, is work a little bit on our temperature here. It's quite warm and I do wanna cool it down a little bit. So I'm gonna to go to 4,500 Kelvin and I'm gonna keep my temperature to that, which gives me kind of a nice bluer touch to my blacks as well. All right, so I haven't mentioned this earlier, but I do want to do a double raw conversion again for these images so we can get a bit more detail here out of this, but still keeping our first raw conversion actually a little bit more detail in the back. Okay, so we're going to do that. For the first adjustment now, what we're going to do is literally just work for the back. So we're concentrating just on the room and we're going to take exposure just a little bit down. I want to push the shadows just up a little bit so we also get a bit more detail just in the shadow parts maybe to somewhere around plus 17. Then as well the highlights, let's push them a little bit. Okay, and also saturation down a little bit to minus nine. And also the blacks, I'm gonna give them a bit more contrast here in the back. Okay, and that's actually fine so far. I'm gonna go down here to the workspace options and just have a look, open as smart object, that is good. Okay, and we can hit here open object. So that will be taking us right into Photoshop. Okay, so our image is now opened in Photoshop. We can now also make this a little bit bigger and we can also actually quit bridge here so we save a little bit on some RAM. Okay, I'm going to press F for nice full screen mode here. Okay, so that is basically now our raw one. I'm just going to double tap here again on this and rename this to raw one. Now we want to do a double raw conversion, basically meaning that we're just going to adjusting our person here and not the background. We already done that on the first raw. So what I'm going to do is select my raw one layer, go back to layers, we're going to go to smart objects and new smart object via copy. We have to do that, otherwise if we're going to adjust this raw image, this raw file will also be adjusted and we have say the two of the same images which we don't want. Okay, so raw two, which we basically going to now only work on the person. I'm also gonna double tap again on the small icon here, which takes us directly back into camera raw. So that is the smart object option. Okay, so now in camera raw again, first of all, what I want to do is still keep my same temperature settings. I don't wanna play with that and as well keep the saturation pretty much the same. So we got the same color tones and fields. Okay, so but for now, I do want to bring more, more detail out of this black suit here. So what you're going to do, first of all, I'm going to take the exposure just up a little bit. Okay, let's also take the shadows up a little bit, a little bit further. Okay, that contrast again, so taking down the blacks just a little bit again. And also we can push the highlights a little bit. And don't forget, we're also going to do some dodge and burning through this process. So... I'm not going to do it too much because otherwise it's going to be looking too grungy and very cartoonish in a way and don't want to get too much of that style. Okay, and also want to try to push the contrast just a little bit, maybe to just plus one, plus two. That's good enough. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with this. Maybe, maybe even just the exposure, just a little bit up more. Okay, so again, we can also adjust our opacity in Photoshop again if this is too bright because you kind of have to find the right levels for this. If it's too bright, too dark, it's not going to suit the image, so we have to get it perfect. Anyways, okay, let's also have a look. Our workflow options here, it's smart object, yes, and we can hit OK. That will be opened as another smart object in Photoshop. Okay, and as you guys can see already, there we have our new raw conversion. So if I'm going to switch this off, raw conversion 1 and raw conversion 2. Okay, so you guys can already see it's a lot brighter. It's also brightening up the background completely. But we do have loads of new details just here in the front. So first step that I'm going to do now is basically take both layers 
and hold that with shift, select both layers, press right click and say rasterize these layers. I'm going to work now without smart objects because I don't need smart objects at the moment anymore and I want to save a little bit of my RAM. So I'm just rasterizing those layers. Then as well on row 2 I'm also going to hit a layer mask but a hidden layer mask. So hold alt, select a new layer icon, new mask icon and now we really have a hidden mask. Okay so with my brush again with B, with Z zooming in a little bit and B with the brush. I can now firstly have two different opacities. One can be up here with my brush or I can try to keep everything at the same brush opacity and secondly change my opacity over here again just on my mask. So firstly I'm just going to work with the brush opacity here somewhere around say 70%. Okay and also going to press Control Alt again make my brush a little bit bigger here. I'm working with a Vacuum Intenuous 5 tablet so I'm able via my board to really quickly change my brush sizes here as well if I'm going to work with this little ring. For you who don't have that please go up here to the top and select your brush sizes over here. Then as well Control Alt so left and right will feather or change the diameter as well of your brush and up and down the hardness. Okay so by the way I wanted to change the hardness down to zero and also I want to now literally just brush with the right foreground color, so white foreground color, just brush a little bit here on all the black details. Now I'm not picking up the brush because otherwise it's going to be duplicated or the brush effect will be doubled. So literally just a little bit over the guy here. Okay, and everything where we have and get more details. Okay, and a little bit more down. Let's also paint down here, so literally just once over here and I can already see that I'm brushing a little bit onto the background and let's also go over here in the front just get a bit more detail here in his eyes as well and I'm going to double tap a little bit further here okay and we already have a bit more detail there so again here's our before and after before and after it looks a bit punchy as well so I'm going to go back here to the mask press B for the brush a little bit up here Okay, switch now again with black foreground color. I'm going to switch also my opacity to just 30%. Make my brush a little bit bigger. And I'm slowly just brushing the, all the overstanding whiteness or brightness here actually away. Tap, tap. A little bit over this head here. Tap, tap to give it also a bit of shape again. All the way around. So just cleaning up all these areas again. And this is, I'm, I'm doing this very roughly at the moment. Don't need to be too precise with this. Just watch out that you're not kind of getting a halo effect. So, okay, all the way around. And we can zoom out a little bit again. And there you already see our before and after. So here's our before and after, before and after. So, and if this is now a little bit too strong, you can already take the opacity again down, say to just 80, 90%, somewhere around there, 86%. And that looks good already. Okay, so these are basically my first adjustments that I'm just going to do a group here with Command G and just write here raw conversion. Okay, so we basically have the raw conversion already. Now I'm going to do a master shortcut. Press Command, Alt, Shift and E all together. Merge all the layers together so we have one normal basic solid layer again. So I'm going to work on this layer and this is my basic image, my ground plate. Okay, first step that I'm going to do is also transform this a bit and just scale this a little bit off. I do want to cut off this piece here at the top. Let me just paint quickly with the red foreground color. This part here at the top, I want to remove that and also scale the person just a little bit better in this whole composition. Okay, so I'm going to delete this layer again. Press Command T and also going to hold Shift now. That was a little bit too quick. Let me zoom out a little bit with the Z. Now pressing Command T again get into the transform mode taking this little point here and just dragging this out a little bit okay a little bit further and we can place him a little bit more over maybe with the cursors left and right let's have a look down a little bit that's kind of working already okay so it does also look a bit distorted here in the side so it's going a little over I'm gonna hold command and just literally take one of the anchor points here and drag it just a little bit over so the room looks a little, little bit better okay leave it again accept that and that's already our first transformation
Okay, so the next step that I want to do as well is also copy this. So I'm going to press Command J to just have a copy and I call this the retouch layer. So I'm going to work with healing, cloning brush and also fix a bit the background and fix all the things up. If I do a mistake, I can obviously fall back onto my basic layer. So let's start now working just on the retouch layer. First step that I want to do is just remove this guy here at the top. So I'm going to take my clone stamp tool make it a little bit bigger, sample an area from close by and literally just going to brush this guy out okay a little bit also at the top taking that out okay and as well now going to take out a little bit of this line here but for that I'm going to use the heating brush tools so J on your keyboard also you can go here on the tools healing brush I'm going to make mine a little bit bigger and I'll hold alt again and sample the area close by and again Healing brush tool samples a lot of the texture and not the color tones. So as you guys can see now we have the texture here, which I don't really want. So watch out for that. Okay, a bit more. Also over here. Okay, let's also work a little bit on these at the top. I'm going to take that out as well. It's obviously very blurred, so not a lot of sharpness there. Clean this up a little bit. Not too sure about this big patch here, maybe going to leave that, leave some really rustic details in there. Okay, a little bit further and also that, a little bit down here. Okay, so that's pretty much all, maybe a little bit more. Okay, and we're going to sample all these areas away. Okay, just in cleaning it up a little bit better so it doesn't take all the attention of your eye. Let's have a look here again before and after, before and after. So your attention doesn't go all the way to the top. Okay, let's also now work a little bit here on the image. I can see there's like a blue dot here or something. So on that J healing brush tool, again literally just brushing over that. Then I'm also going to go a little bit over my image here and just have a look what if I need to take something out. Everything looks really nice at the moment. Skin, everything looks good. Obviously for this image as well, don't want to retouch too much on the skin. Love this very dangerous and gangster look, terrorist look, whatever you want to call it. Okay, go a little bit through again. And that's so far, I'm pretty happy with that. Okay, so next step as well, I want to apply some sharpness to this. So Command J again. I'm just going to write here sharpness, okay, and on the sharpness layer I'm going to go with a filter, I'm going to go to other, high pass, and we're going to create a little bit of a high pass effect here on this guy. I'm just going to go a little bit through his face to see the detail in the face, okay, and we have it around 10 pixels, maybe a little bit lower, so go somewhere to 9, 8 pixels, okay, and that looks a little bit better already. Okay, select OK for that and we're also going to now change our blending options down to soft light. Soft light, there we go and already you guys can see we have a bit more sharpness here on this guy. So before and after, before and after, giving just a little bit of that grungy look as well. Okay, let's have a look again before and after. It's a little bit intense for me so I'm going to take it a little bit down. So around 70% again before and after, before and after. Really sharpening that a little bit further. Okay, watch out again for halos. We don't have any halos. That is good for the moment. Okay, so we're going to take now retouch, sharpness and the basic layer. Press Command G again, create a new group and we call this again retouch and details. Okay, for the next step that I want to do is also add a little bit of a light control, like a bit of a vignetting effect onto this image. At the moment it looks all straight and plain, so I do want to make the background a little bit more darker and also lead the viewer's eye a little bit into the center here. Okay, so our next step now is also to create a little bit of a light feeling in here and controlling the light a little bit better. So first step that I'm going to do is just go over to my elliptical marking tool here and we're going to create a nice elliptical marking shape here. A nice selection. Okay, something like that. But now it's still not feathered and really hard, so we need to feather this as well. So I'm going to go up here to select, modify, and we're going to feather. Okay, so feathering this first of all with 250 pixels. Okay, so it's feathered once, but it's not good enough yet, so we're going to go back to select again, modify again, and feather that once more again. So again, 250 pixels, 
and we have a nice round smooth feathered selection now. Okay, so the next step that we're going to do is create a levels adjustment layer. So let's go to our adjustments and select the levels adjustment layer. Okay, so as you guys can see already, we have a nice spot here in the center and also the outside is a little bit dark. So we can actually use this like a torch now and just brighten the center a little bit and keep the outsides dark like a vignette. Okay, but before we go and create a vignette as well now from this, I first of all want to work a little bit on this mask. So I'm going to go back to my levels adjustment layer here at the top and just brighten this completely to either see where we're actually working on the file. I'm not going to leave it as bright as you guys are seeing it now. Now let's work also on the mask. So we're going to take B for the brush again. I'm going to work around about, yes, 50% opacity already here. That's good for me. And also black foreground color so we can actually see where we're working. Okay, so let's also brush a little bit here on the mask. I'm just going to brush a little bit in here. Okay, that's wrong. So go step back. We do want to show the person now. So leaving him bright and we're just masking out the background in order for us to make it a little bit darker. Okay, so we can actually also try working with 100% opacity. So let's take this a little bit up and then we're just refining the edges around the person later. Okay, a little bit around here and as well at the top. Okay, and we're going to go all the way around him. As you guys can also see on the right hand side from the mask already, it's changing here. So you guys can literally see where we're painting and where we're hiding again the mask. Okay, a little bit around. Then also I'm going to make my brush a little bit smaller now. Go a little bit deeper here. And also in all the little corners. Okay, and all the way around here. Just have a final control. Okay, also going to go in this area here. Just be careful with that. Making my brush size always a little bit smaller. I'm going to also change my opacity now again down to 50%. Also 5 on the keyboard. Quick shortcut there. Okay, and that's a little bit darker now. And also going to brush a little bit here on the edge. So it doesn't look too bad. Okay, so feathering that mask now a little bit on the edge. Also down here and over here. Okay, so that's already just my mask now for the person. So basically lightening just him up a little bit. So we can now also take our exposure down a little bit. And what we're trying to achieve now is just brightening the center a little bit so that your eye is leading or paying more attention to the center. Okay, so let's also duplicate this mask layer now. So Command J, duplicating that. That is obviously doubling our effect, but we don't want that. We're going to invert this mask now. So press Command I and that will obviously invert that. Now you guys think, wow, but it's still the same effect. Yes, that is because our levels are still adjusted to brightness. So it's obviously still brightening the picture. We are going to take the midpoint sliders now and darken the picture. But now also have a look. If we darken it too much, it just looks a bit weird and dodgy. So I'm not going to take it too far down. Maybe just somewhere over here, 0.90%. Also, let's have a blacks here a little bit more down. Not too much. Okay, and also I'm going to go back to my first levels adjustment layer and just take the brightness also down a little bit. Okay, and now we're also going to take both of the layers with Command again, press Command G, and we're just going to write here light. Okay, let's quickly have a look before and after. So that is again before and after, before and after. I'm not too happy yet with this adjustments down here. It still looks a little bit weird. So maybe let's work a little bit more here just on the legs. But so far for the top, all looks good and your eye definitely leads more to the foreground than to the background. Okay, let's open this again and let's have a look here if we can just brighten up the legs a little bit. So open the mask, white foreground color, 100% opacity. And I'm literally just going to brush a little bit over here and a little bit over here. Just tap, tap, tap a few times. And again on the left side and that looks already a little bit better. Okay, again, before and after, before and after. Okay, so my next step that I also want to do now is go back to adjustments and create a selective color adjustment layer here. For that, I just want to create a little bit of an even color tone for the background and for him, and also give my blacks a little bit of a magenta touch. So in my colors here, under the neutrals, I'm going to change my cyan a little bit, 
have a look what that will give me. A little bit to the right and we're also getting a blue-green effect which I don't really want. Let's go to the magentas a little bit, take them a little bit to the right so it's getting a bit too reddish. But we can still create another hue and saturation adjustment layer with red colors to take that down a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to leave it at magenta at plus three. Also the yellows. Let's have a look, right? It's giving us just more yellow. Okay, not too happy with that. And obviously our blacks, we can still brighten that up a little bit. Okay, so the reds are pushed a little bit too much for me. I'm going to go back to adjustments, back to hue and saturation. And under our masters, we're just going to go into the red color tones and take the reds down just a little bit. Okay, but I also want to create for this terrorist look, it will suit it if it will look a little bit desaturated. So I'm going to go back just to the masters and also take the complete masters down a little bit. Let's take it even further. Let's take that up a little bit again. I think the reds are too much desaturated now. So I'm going to take them up a little bit again. Back into masters again. And let's have a look if we take that a further down. It's just too much. So again, somewhere minus 11. Have a look before and after, before and after. You're just desaturating that a little bit. Okay, so take both of these layers, Command G again, and right here, color for the start. So this is just a color start. As well, I want to open this again and also just try something quickly. Go to Adjustments and also go to my black and white filter here. Create a black and white filter on there. I'm just going to make this a little bit bigger. Okay, and I'm going to go into the blue filter. So darken that completely, as you guys can see now. And we're also going to move that now to soft light. Okay, that is darkening it quite intense. So obviously taking my exposure down to just around 7% or maybe 10, 11%. Again, before and after, before and after. Okay, so just giving that a bit more contrast again, which kind of suits the image. Okay, again, before and after. Okay, just giving this image a little bit more contrast. Okay, I'm going to minimize this again, and now we're going to start again with a new layer and create our dodge and burn process. So for that, again, Command A, which will select your complete canvas with a selection. And I'm going to press M for marking tool, right click, and we can now say fill this again with 50% gray under our contents. Okay, also going to keep this as a soft light blending option. Okay, so that's going to be our soft layer again. Let's double tap on here, hard layer. So everything is hard in that. Okay, so again, that blending option also switch that to overlay and our second overlay option should be soft light. Okay, select both layers, command G. And we're also going to rename this now to D and B for dodge and burn process. Okay, so as you guys know, if you most probably watch a lot of my tutorials, I normally start on the hard layer here and start working on all the small little details for just that process. So first of all, press B for the brush. Again, I'm going to choose 0 0.7, so just 7% opacity. And also my foreground color, I already tapped here once, so let's just go history back. Then also my foreground colors back to black and white. Okay, so with D, switch that back to black and white and X foreground color white, but I'm going to start with black. Okay, B for the brush and on my hard layer, make my brush a little bit smaller, press Control Alt. It should be completely feathered, so zero hardness. And I'm literally now just going to brush in here and darken some certain areas. As you guys can see under the eyes a little bit, darken these areas a little bit over here. They are quite dark already, so I don't want to overdo it. Just a little bit under the eyes as well, getting that scary look out of there. Don't be afraid, this is not a real terrorist. It's just a friend that I know, and he's not evil in any way. <laughs> okay, so let's brush this a little bit around here. I'm going around the tongue, and all these little areas here that we already can see, giving that just some nice structure. Okay, a little bit around the teeth. I'm also going to, once we're done with the dodge and burn process, show you guys the whole process that I did. Okay, also going to dodge the nose here a bit, or actually burn. So just up a little bit, don't do, do too much, just a little bit on the sides here as well. Okay, that we're also going to still do on our soft layer. Okay, now I'm switching back to white foreground color so we can dodge a little bit. First of all, dodging here just a little bit on the skin again, bringing just a bit more detail out, also a little bit in the eyes. And I don't want to overdo it. This is already a little bit dark here, so try to do it subtly. 
Okay, then it's well done here, giving that a bit of a push here on his teeth and lips. Kind of a scary picture. Okay, let's also zoom down a little bit and now we can already see what we've created just here in the face. So before and after, before and after. Okay, I'm also going to work now just on the soft light because obviously it's going to be quite intense and have quite a cartoonish look. So I don't want to overdo the dodge and burn process. Okay, so with white foreground color, I'm just going to dodge really roughly over the highlights here. Bringing just a bit more details back again, also on the darks. Obviously all is pretty dark here, so you will see the light reflections on here pretty nice and you'll get this nice dodge and burn effect as well. Okay, a little bit more down. And we just burn, sorry, dodging all these little areas over here. Okay, now I do want to dodge just on the wrinkles here, not too much on the shadow sides. A little bit in here, here. Go a little bit more down. Do it here on the pants as well. And make this a little bit bigger brightening this again and now with small strokes this is actually a little bit too hard okay let's also go over to his arm and just highlight this a little bit better so that he's just standing out a little bit better also a little bit over here let's also go to the right hand side make my brush a little bit bigger and just one big stroke over here okay so I'm going to still brush over here on his fingers Okay, now I'm going to switch to black for color so we can actually burn a little bit and create some really nice contrast in here as well. Also down here, very carefully. Okay, I'm first of all going to do just his arms and then we're going to go to the clothing. Okay, and now I do want to here just dodge, sorry, burn all these wrinkled shadow areas. Okay, a little bit more down as well. And all around here. Burning again all these little areas in there. And I'm doing this very quickly now and very roughly as well. Take some time when you do this. This will just show your image way better. And not as quick as I'm doing it at the moment. Okay, a little bit over here as well. Going around, I'm going to switch again foreground color so I can just brighten this a little bit. And again, switch, and I just want to burn a little bit the shadow under his chin. Okay, and now I'm also going to work a little bit here on his mask. So it's very bright at the top, so let's just darken this a little bit. So all the shadow areas again. Okay, and also here in the center a little bit because he's obviously having a light from the left and right side So it would suit a little bit if we just darken it in the center and not too much on the sides Okay, and also showing a little bit of the face structure here. So burning this quite a little bit more And again and again and again Okay, and we're gonna have a look at before and after before and after maybe a little bit here in the front So switch foreground colors again tap tap Give that just one or two taps. Okay, now I do also want to work a little bit on this hair. So switch again to the hard layer. B for the brush. I'm going to work first of all with burning. So black foreground color. And I'm literally just stroking over all the edges here. Trying to bring out these hairs quite a lot. So just burning, burning all these sides here. And making long, consistent strokes. So this is really nice if you have a vacuum continuous 4 or 5 tablet. This works really nice. Okay, so we dodged, uh, burned enough now. Now we're going to dodge a little bit on here. And also again, remember on the hard layer. So this will stand out quite a lot. Okay, a little bit more and also down here. Brightening these highlights a little bit. Okay, let's zoom out again. Then we can have a look before and after again, what we already did just with dodge and burning process. Again, before and after, before and after. And that is quite strong though, so I'm going to take the whole dodge and burn layer down to just 80%. So again, before 
and after, before and after. Let's also switch off everything so we can actually see what's happening here on our hard layer, normal. And we're also going to switch this back to normal. Let's also take the opacity up so we can show you guys this complete process. Okay, so this is everything that I did for my hard layer. Basically just the eyes and small areas just dodging and burning in there as well in the hair. And this is again the complete soft layer. So literally just burning on the clothing here, a little bit on the arm, and again dodge and burning on some certain areas on the texture on the clothing. Okay, and also on the mask here at the top. Okay, I'm going to switch them back again, switch that on, dodge and burn, should be 100 and 100 opacity, but hard layer, so hard overlay, blending mode, and then soft blending mode, soft light, and my whole group down to 80% opacity, not that strong. Okay, switch everything on again, and that is our dodge and burn process. Now for my last stage that I still want to do is again create a unique color profile on this. So I'm going to zoom out a little bit press Command, Alt, Shift and E, merge all layers again. Once I mostly merge all layers, only if I'm really happy with the whole retouching. Okay, so now I'm going to take this layer one back into a filter called NYX Software Color FX Pro 4. A few weeks ago we did a tutorial about this, where I also discussed my favorite presets from the NYX software. Okay, so the NYX software has loaded. I'm going to make this a little bit bigger here so we can actually see a little bit more of this plugin. Okay, on the left hand side I'm going to work first of all with the cross process and just try a different cross process on this. So again my strength, I normally keep the strength up quite high here and then in my layers in the Photoshop take down the opacity a little bit. Okay, so first of all I'm going to try again CO4, that also gives me a nice bluish touch, just a little bit too much. I want to desaturate that a little bit. Then as well, let's also try like a greener, really a mystic um, look for a terrorist, like this for instance. So it's a little bit yellowish. Okay, let's go down a little bit. I'm pretty happy with this actually with the LO5. And again, like I said, I'm going to take the opacity down in Photoshop. So let's also, we can try if we put the strength down here. Okay, keep that up a bit more. Let's also try the shadows. So we don't darkening the shadows too much. We're actually leaving a little bit of detail in the shadows. Okay, and our highlights, we're obviously just going to break the highlights, so leave the highlights punchy. That also gives you a nice punch on your image. Okay, again, maybe 7 or 9%, maybe even more 11%, but I'm going to take the strength up a little bit more again. Okay, so somewhere around 35%, maybe a bit more, 35%, that's good for me. Okay, so pretty happy with this now. I'm going to say OK, and keep this color profile now into Photoshop. Okay, and there we have our new cross process with our new color tone, as you guys can see now. So we can also delete layer one now again. We don't need that layer anymore. So just have a look here again before and after, before and after. I'm also still going to take this cross process down a little bit, like I said earlier, just in my opacity. Let's have a look here if we can take that to say 70%, 80%, a little bit too strong again. This is also a little bit of a personal taste if you want to take it to the yellow side or more bluish magenta. Kind of think the yellow suits this a little bit more. Okay, so next step, I'm also going to go to adjustments, create another curves here and just try to create an overall light adjustment, pushing the whole image a little bit further, a little bit down on the contrast. It just gets a little bit too dark, so don't want to push it too much, just a little bit the contrast again. And last step, also hue and saturation again, and just take the saturation down a little bit. So again, before and after. Okay, so then again, I'm going to take these layers, press Command G, right here again, color, and also Command Alt Shift E, master shortcut, merging everything together. So if that still looks a little bit too bright, I'll most probably spend a day away now from this image. Then come back and have a look if I still want to readjust something, if I want to still add more contrast or maybe crop it a little bit nicer. But so far I'm pretty happy with that. Okay, let's also have a look quickly from our start to finish where we started out with. I'm just going to create this layer here. Okay, and we can switch that off. So before and after before and after and directly I can already see I actually want to darken this a little bit more. So again before and after, before and after. So directly I can see that I'm going to go create a new levels adjustment layer. 
just darken this a bit more okay again let's have a look here before and after before and after okay yeah so that's basically all for today's photoshop tutorial do let me know in the comments down below what you think about this creative retouching and if you guys want to have a few more of these creative retouchings if you are interested in that or if you want to have some more photo manipulation tutorials then as well hit me up with a like support me subscribe and i'll see you guys all next week for a new photoshop tutorial